Oops. Sorry about the camera. Um, uh, hey everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, today I'll be continuing on from um, last week's session where I was adding, I believe, um, either support for string literals or some kind of more advanced um, string literal operations such as spreads and things like that. Um, so I'll be continuing on from there today. Um, I'm intending to turn this into kind of a regular uh, session as well. So I'll be looking to uh, do this uh, stream at uh, from three o'clock to five o'clock Irish time on Saturdays, uh, just to make it a bit more regular. And um, since I'm intending to do this anyway, I might as well stream it. So, um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's dive in, and I'll just take a look at um, where we were. So, what what was this operation um, telling us? So, if I compile this, I get B and C. And what's uh, what's our source code at the moment? Actually, uh, so test.txt. So we um, have support for string literals. Yes. So um, so this looks like uh, string literals have. Uh, have a basic implementation um, already. Um, and again, we were doing this kind of um, fairly inefficient implementation to start off with, but it works. <clears throat> so we're probably not going to need anything more sophisticated for the time being. Uh, so let's take a look at um, where we'll go next. So, uh, so how about um, the spread operator? So all we want to do here is take the um, X's list and spread it out um, during the construction of a new uh, list literal. So <clears throat> I'll save this and take a look at, let's see. Uh, so we'll probably go on to start with um, the parser and <clears throat> um, so we'll probably start here with um with expression list. So it's going to want to go in somewhere there, I believe. Um, <clears throat> and so the question, so we could potentially um put support for it just here, so that we just you know, have support for it like that. However, we probably want to be a bit smarter than that and make sure that it can only be uh, present in the right location. So let's take a look. Uh, so one thing, one way we could potentially play this is by embedding it here as an optional, um, an optional token so that then would this work let's see uh, what uh, what's our ast looking like at the moment as, as well out of uh, curiosity so we have our list and this is going to be a vector of expressions now we could um add support here for uh, the likes of a some type so that we can have um, something like maybe spread expression. So that would be either an expression or um, a spread expression. And let's just think about the evaluation here. So yeah, so we're not we're not evaluating it at this point. We only want to evaluate it once we're going through a eval list. So yeah, so we just want to store the fact that it is um, a spread uh, variable here, and not the you know not the evaluation of that, uh, which makes sense. So <clears throat> let's see. Um, What's a possible implementation for this? So, and um, maybe 
spread expression or if we just call this something like um, list item in fact have I come up with terminology for for list items already so they're called X's in the in the AST um, have I anything in a val for these yet if I do a search for item so item is uh, the item terminology isn't being used yet and if I do a search for list I list X's X's and it's got vals so could call it list val mm. I'll call them items for the time being. It might mean that later I, I refactor X's to be items, but um, yeah, we'll go with this for now. So a list item is going to be um, an expression. So this is going to be a, a struct instead of our usual enums. And it's going to be an expression and an optional spread. Uh, so and we we'll leave it at that order and we'll update uh, the list to be a vector of list items. And same over here. <clears throat> and this is going to be Yep. So what we're going to need to do there is wrap this in a list item uh, where we have uh, the expression is the head and we have is spread. Well, first, actually, I better just make sure that so I'll comment this part out and I'll just make sure that the parsing rules that I'm looking that I'm thinking of at the moment are actually going to work in this scenario. And so I'll save that and I'll get rid of this from the moment. Just double check that everything is building. Stuff is not building at the moment because I've been a bit um, eager. Okay, so that's just due to, um, to the um, test code including some new uh, new values yeah that's all okay why didn't it output actually oh because wise doesn't exist wonder why it didn't give me an error in this case uh, it could be that uh, main isn't set up to handle that error at the moment I think we're all right to skip it for the time being I just want to check will this rule work and how do I check if this is present or not? Actually, I might need to um, check. First, I'll just check, does the rule itself compile with ladder pop? Yes, that does. And is it all right there? Yes, that's all right. So so let me see. Um, uh, ladder pop and and optional terminal oh what am i doing um do i have any other examples here that are doing something similar where i just have a question mark after a terminal to see if it matches no i don't so um and that is a terminal or did we find out last time that they're called productions? Um, oh no, it's the um, non-terminals I think are called uh, productions. So let's see, ladder pop kit of pages. I want you to show me. Anything interesting in the examples here? 
building ASTs perhaps. No. Nothing in there. What I might do is check um, uh, some projects. Uh, so I, how I found out about Ladder Pop is um, through these projects uh, posted by a very talented young person uh, called Adam McDaniel, who posted um, a few toy projects that he um, He's done during college, so I, I believe he's an undergraduate and um, just recently uh, started university and um, that's how I found out about uh, Lather Pop and um, I occasionally look at his source code just to, because sometimes the Lather Pop um, documentation itself is a little um, little dense or you know the examples aren't too um illustrative so sometimes i just look at this um this person's um uh kind of parser definition see if there are any little bits of um syntax that i can uh, that i can use and is there anything here so I have something similar there, but it doesn't have the have the question mark. It's it's not looking for presence of of those um of those items. In fact, do I have notes anywhere that um That contain this kind of thing. Hmm. Can't remember. So nothing there, nothing there. If I do a search for question mark. Ah, maybe if I do so if I do a match for this on its own, I believe that will come out as just a string. And then if I add a question mark to it, it'll be an option string. So let's see, um, I'll try, I'll try just doing, doing what I'm thinking which is, so I can bring this stuff back in. This is all, this should all be fine. Um, list item. Um, and what I want to do here now is, well, let's see, let's do a little bit of cheating first, perhaps, and try and find out the type of, uh, of this spread item. So if I go here, that should be all right. And if, or no, I'll change this back to expression and that, that should compile. Um, no, not just yet. If this goes back to expression, this will this will compile. And then if I change this to, the type of spread, I'll get the type back. Of course, a lot of these issues would probably be easily solved if, uh, like, getting the type of this uh, this variable. Although, even in an IDE, this is uh, going into a code generator, so it'd probably be a little tricky to find the type of this anyway. Um, but let's see. So this will be an option of yeah, um, constant string. So what I would want to do. In this case, so I'm changing, changing that to a bool basically to indicate presence of this uh, this item. So if I change this back to a list item, and go over here, and I'll be changing this to 
list item with an exp expression of head and is spread will then be if spread uh, what do um, what methods do uh, rust uh, options have just want to know if it's um, if it's some or none. Um, it's an, I assume it's an enum anyway. Maybe maybe there's no methods on it directly, and you just have to uh, match match it. But that I'd be surprised by that. Rust is usually fairly comprehensive with the um, with the methods. But if this is an in uh, built it almost like um. Uh, built-in type, but almost like a primitive type. Um, uh, oh, so is there a lower level? Oh no, this is the same thing. Um, see, there's some and contains a value or none and does not. Right, that has, as they have a number of issues. And it's like, option types are very common as they have a number of issues. That seems a little odd. And um, nope, that was just reading it wrong. So let's see. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, there just don't seem to be. Can I do? Rust option methods. And uh, maybe that's what I'm looking for. Ah, yes, that makes more sense. And then, yeah, I mean, it'd be very strange to have no, uh, no methods on it, I feel. Um, just based on, uh, on my very brief experience with rust and yeah here we are uh, is some that's uh, that's what we're looking for so we're looking for a uh, spread um is some and let's put that in a slightly nicer layout oops meant to um turn my timeout uh app off and we're back in business. So, uh, so is spread is sum, and so that should be all right for that one. But for this, a uh, list would should I have a function to make this easier? There, it's all right the way it is. Um, and all we're doing is just uh, wrapping wrapping the item up slightly so that it has this extra is spread um, attribute. And now the next issue is in eval, which is what we'd expect. So we're not, uh, we're no more iterating over just uh, standard expression items, but um, almost like tagged expression items, uh, which, you know, could, uh, could be spreadable. So let's take a look here. So if we go into eval, uh, line one, two, nine, and we value the expression here. And um, well, this would have to be X's. Oh yes, so this is, um, we'll have to 
redo this um, for handling list items specifically. This means there's, there'll only be one call to this, but I'll I'll leave the function there. It's you know it's it's making things a little uh, a little tidier I think. Uh, so for expression in x's, we'll eval the expression. So we'll rename that to item, and item expression will get ev evaluated. And then the next thing to do is if the value uh, that got evaluated is a uh, gets evaluated to a list or you know regardless of what it gets evaluated to if there's the spread operation attached to it uh, then we'll instead of pushing the value directly on we'll concatenate it on uh, to the list so far so let's see uh, I'll leave that there for the time moment as a reference mm. So for item in X is item expression, that's all right. And then if uh, if the item is a spread, oof, what am I doing? I'm using camel case here, and that should definitely not be the way. Um, is spread and AST. Now I'm sure Clippy would have uh, warned me anyway, but just sort that out. So if it's not a spread, then we just do our normal normal push. Uh, but if it is a spread, then then we need to make sure that the value, uh, which is v, evaluates to a a list value. And and if that isn't the case, then we'll want to do um, want to do a little error. Uh, do I have much uh, precedent for that? So here we have um, a sample error that we returned from these kind of things. A uh, condition must be. Uh, so we'll update that to can't spread uh, or only lists can be spread. So we have that. Again, a nesting is going a little deep, maybe. Mm. Should we take it out of the um of the match statement here? So yeah, so we go let v equal that, and we'll handle this block down here. Uh, and again, using some tips from Go, uh, I will. the indent and these areas by uh, uh, using a kind of an if if continue uh, layout that'll allow me to de-indent the the other path so then if we match b let's see um yeah if it turns out that it's a list then what we can do is we can just do vals push no is it concat i'll have to check and so rust list uh, no it's a vec uh, in fact have i used something like this already push uh, maybe vals if i look for Examples of vowels and slice. Nope. No, I don't seem to have used something like that already. So maybe push or yeah. 
Pushing the trader. Extend maybe? Extend from slice? I'm not sure. Push. Nope, not if it's experimental. Um, insert, maybe drain, creates a draining iterator, but that drains the, um, the object itself. Nope. Push, retain, shrink, splice with capacity. Nope, nope, nope. Um, maybe join. In fact, was this something like what I was looking for for the actual uh, more efficient version of? Um, of list concatenation, um, quite possibly. Mm, anyway, this uh, this method isn't it. Um, this is just on um, on strings, is it? Hmm. If I do rust vec concat, uh, append quite possibly. Let's see, vals append x's. How have I not been uh, seeing that the whole time? So if I go back. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of those. I think that's uh, that's more or less the implementation I want now. Let's see. Yeah, there are some errors. I'm going to take a look at those. Um, append right there, right at the top, moves all the elements of other into self, leaving leaving other empty. I mean, yeah, that's that's what I wanted for for a lot of these things. So. Um, might go back and update the other um the other bit as well um the the parser itself so let's see eval one four nine and um, okay val's expected a value found of vec so at the moment vec is there whoops i shouldn't have deleted that stuff so prematurely and um, so i need to return okay vals or okay list uh, 149 expected value found that vows is the unit uh, type now why would that be the case a vector of a unit oh because Ah, uh, yeah, that'll make a little bit of sense. And I should uh, unindent those. That would confuse me a lot later. Uh, one, four, three. Um, expected a mutable vector. Ooh, found a vector. Consider mutably borrowing here. Hmm, yes. Um, where is X is coming from? Uh, well, I don't want to append X's actually. I want to append, what do I want to append? V. Um, uh, oh, oh no, X's is coming from here. Well, yeah, my names are really bad at the moment. Um, maybe if I, do I want to clone that? Is it necessary to clone that? So these will all have evaluated. 
not sure why I couldn't. Um, can I just do that? Let's see what happens. Nice, yeah, that's all right. Uh, 137. Uh, private field, yes, because I haven't been paying attention to that. Uh, and both of those are private fields. And so that should be mute X's. Now I'm going to have a little trouble here because I don't use this stuff very often. And that just works. Nice one. So um, so let's take a look at my test. So if I uncomment this line, should we check why uh, why Wise isn't uh, kicking up a fuss actually? So let's see. Um, hmm. So we're evaluating the program here. And we're outputting the whole result. Yeah, surely there would be an error. Uh, but maybe not. What is the error that I'm expecting that when it evaluates Y's um, as a parameter to print that it'll recognize that Y's doesn't, uh, doesn't exist. So let's see. Um, I think it's in call, evaluate expressions, goes through each of those. And then if it's a var, yeah, an expression var, it'll try and get it from the environment. But then if it isn't there, it should say it's not defined. So what's, um, what's the dealio here then? Hmm, interesting. So let's see. Um, where to even start for this? So we have print wise. I'll just double check that it's not caused by. Yeah, it still doesn't happen. Hmm, and if I put that down there, that's not causing issues either. Ah, so is it, um, are the comments kind of eating too much? So if I put a comment, uh, if I put print uh, one and two, three, and then I just comment out print two, Yeah, so that swallowed the rest of the program. So I don't want my um, comments to do that. I just want them to be single lines. So I want that to, can I just do this? Invalid token. Hmm. And a location twenty five. Location twenty six. So that's um. What's going on there? Not actually sure. Hmm. For the moment. Moment, I'll note that down so that'll be going in the to dos. Um, I haven't really been looking at this um, too much actually, but um, or in fact, is there a better place for this? No, I'll put in the to dos. Um, prevent comments from swallowing too much. And then we'll get back in back in the saddle for this one. I gotta get rid of this print here. And oh, so this is just working, I believe. 
So we have um, the list of x's is the string b and c, then string a, then string b and c. Uh, nice, that's, um, that's exactly what we wanted. Nice one. Um, just thinking about it now, how is that actually working? Uh, because when we go into a val and I do a, a spread over here, Ah, it's because every time I retrieve the value from the environment, I assume, so when I do a var retrieval, yes, I clone the variable. So I was wondering how, uh, because uh, this uh, list append is actually consuming the original um, the original list that it's getting. And I was saying, how can that be done twice? Because um, after it consumes the original one, uh we're doing the same thing again over here so you know how is that allowed to happen and it's allowed to happen because those are actually uh, different lists because every time i retrieve the um the variable from the environment i'm getting a copy of it um that should be all right um yeah we'll we'll say it's all right for now i won't think think about it too much um, a bit tired today, so uh, not much thinking to be done. Um, all right then, so where are we now? So if I open up test again, and we've done this line, so we've spread operations uh, done. So next is to be able to decompose um, into variable assignment and discard um, entries. Who there's actually actually a fair bit a uh, fair bit going on here. So what I'll do is um, I'll take it one uh, one step at a time. So I'll start off with uh, decomposing x's into a two variable list. And then I'll print B and then I'll print C. Still haven't um, still haven't added support for uh, for more than one variable to a function yet, have I? Oh well. Uh, so unrecognized token uh, position twenty three. It's probably giving out about um, about the positioning of uh, of the list here. So let's go ahead and add support for that to the parser. Um, so here we allow an identifier in the equals position. Uh, next, what are the different things we're going to allow here? So we're going to allow an identifier. We're going to allow a uh, an index. We can essentially allow most expressions in here, which is going to be tricky. Uh, well, not potentially not too tricky. Yeah, we'll we'll see. So, um, so we'll allow identifiers. Could we allow a function? No. We'll allow a list though. And that's slightly different to, to an index. So we could allow um, a dereferenced um, list there. It's kind of tricky. What I could do is just, uh, you know, keep it simple and implement it in kind of on kind of a general basis to start off with again uh, probably just want to keep it fairly simple today in particular and um, and take it from there later on so what 
I'll do here is just add in some brackets. Name. This will be a selection of identifiers. So this will be list items, but not really. So this will be, in fact, I should have taken the opportunity to, to fix this insert um, bit. Although, yeah, that's probably fine the way to do. No, I'll probably fix that um, at some stage. So we want to, this time, so it's not going to be an expression list. It's going to be um, an assign list perhaps. Uh, and it's going to be a vector of list items. So at the moment, it's just going to be, we can only put variables, but then they can, ooh, yeah, <laughs> this gets, uh, very hairy very quickly, doesn't it? Because eventually we'd probably want to be able to do stuff like, you know, B, uh, BD and, you know, we could have an object in here, X, Y. Yeah, again, I'm just gonna keep it simple today, I think, uh, go easy on myself. And then later on we can, uh, we can think about generalizing this. So, um, so for the moment, I'll go assign list items. Is that the name I had down below? And uh, no, that was expression list. And So this can be a just an identifier. We won't bother with spreading at the moment. And this will be an identifier. That'll be an assign list. And we'll just leave that out for the moment. Might actually reuse the list item AST and mm, Maybe. So we'll go assign list. Yeah, RHS can be that. And assign list will be X's. That's what I call them down below. Yeah, X's as so. well. And so this is going to be a vector of, yeah, we'll, we'll reuse list item. Mm. Um, yeah, and we'll just ignore is spread at the moment by just always setting it false. It's gonna to have to be um yeah a list of identifiers so this is gonna to have to change to um to this. Items will need to be um, up 
updated to assign list items. And we get rid of this uh, is spread for the moment. In fact, I'm tempted to just make it a vector of strings for the time being. Yeah. And ident is, whoops, uh, yeah, produces a string. So we're all good here. Uh, need to capitalize that. Just about done there, we have our list. Hmm, okay, this could be, this looks tricky. What's going on here? Is it that? Hmm, I'm not sure what's going on here, actually. And let me just double check code on this section. Yeah, that's all right. Let's see what we're working with here. Whew. That's a lot of a lot of stuff going wrong. Oh, I actually have I reached the start of this? Am I am I just doubling up? Let's see if I can make it out from down here. Uh, when in this state, I'm looking at token, we can reduce to a sign list, but we can also shift. Um, not really sure what that means. Maybe this uh, this description will make more sense. Polymer arises after having observed the following symbols in the input uh, bracket and identifier. At that point, if the next token is a bracket, then the parser can proceed in two different ways. First, the parser could execute the production at line 27. So what's line 27? And that's this uh, fellow there. So it could just be a one element list could be executed, which would consume the top token and produce an assign list. This might then yield a parse tree like assign list equals and then statement. Alternatively, could execute the production at line 49. Don't like where this is going. 49, which is there. Uh, which would consume the top one token from the stack and produce an expression underscore, which would yield a parse tree like this, and that could be an expression. Yeah, we probably, probably would make more sense to just handle that as an expression anyway, and then, then handle it appropriately at the AST parsing stage. Mm. Looks like I'm probably going to be made to do that anyway. So maybe it'd be best to just do something like this LHS expression. So that will allow basically any expression to be assigned to any other expression, and then at the evaluation stage, we can figure out if what is being attempted actually makes sense or not. But this is opening up a whole, whole can of worms. I'm just wondering, is there a way of verifying 
how correct it'll be at all times, let me think. Um, so let's see, just getting out some notebook here. So I have, if I have the likes of x dot y is equal to one, that'd be a method uh, or a, a property expression if I have, let's see what expressions I even support at the moment. Yeah, so let's see what this would look like from um, an AST evaluation point of view. So if I have a, an assignment, I have a name here. So instead of having a name, I'm going to have a uh, left-hand side, an LHS. So I'm going to want to do a match. And it's going to want to do different things depending on what's there. And whoops. So, yeah, we're going to want to allow different things depending on what's here. So if we have, for example, a var here, that's kind of straightforward. That'll be a, uh, where's my equals? That'll be an env insert. If we have a, a literal here, literal, that would be an error. If I have a, a function, if I have a call, that on its own will be incorrect. But if the call was, for example, as part of a, a property access, then that will be all right. So the, the property access will modify the object it's referring to. So that'll be okay. Um, and if there is a list here, then we'll want to go into the list. Yes. And similarly, if there is a, okay, so yeah, so if there is a string literal or an integer literal, then those will be issues. But if there's a list literal or an object literal, then that'll be, um, because they're, because those are kind of compound types, then we're, they can have uh, fields of their own and they'll be candidates for being, for decomposition. So yeah, let's take, uh, Let's take a stab at that. So um, I'm actually going to try for once, think about uh, the actual evaluation of this now before I start looking at the um, at the parser uh, rules. So let's take a look. So if I have, so an LHS, which is an expression var, which is a name, then we get back our um operation here I should probably snapshot this before I go too deep shouldn't I yes yes I should so let's let's undo all of that and let's undo all of that because it was resulting in a conflict anyway, so we'd probably want to um, need to revert it anyway. I 
hadn't used the assignment list item yet. So let's take a look what's that looking like now. And the only issue here is that test is using this new syntax before it's uh, been implemented. So uh, B isn't defined. Yeah, that's all right. Um, but we have support for this stuff. So if we get rid of those, yeah, and we have our working code now. So let's, uh, while the going is good, what's going on there? So, oh, I just removed part of the name. Oh yeah, I just renamed that. Yeah, so I'll do that on its own commit. Um, oof, no verified. This is a this is kind of a, a dirty branch anyway. So or a, a non-serious branch. So with build in, uh, oops, clean. Or rename variables in with build n dot sh and then in here and in fact I'll remove the comments from my test file and get commit no verify. So this will be an add support for the spread operator. Uh, or will I spread operator in general list spread operator. All right. And then, yeah, so let's uh, continue where we left off there. So cool, so I've made a bit of a mess. So let's continue from there. Uh, so when this happens, yeah, we just want to um, do that. And then we get down here, and if it's, uh, let's open up our AST and what, uh, what are different options that are available to us. So if it'll be a string, then can I do that? Can I just ignore all the, all the variables like that? I'm not sure, but basically that'll be, uh, an error cannot assign to a string literal and same for int and if this is going to be so we var covered if it's going to be an op as in operation no we're not so what would that be that would be something like so a multiplied by b is equal to c that, that'd be kind of cool as in so it would uh, find the factors of C and distribute them over that. Um, be like uh, be like constraint programming. Uh, maybe a little advanced for, for this scenario. I think we're just going to um, uh, ignore that. So can I assign to an operation? Oops, what is going on there? Um, 
so let's see next thing is a list so here's the here's where we get interesting uh, oh and there'll be a call as well to a function call these are getting a bit weird and specific maybe mm, maybe it'll be a function call cannot be on the left side of a of an assignment uh, you know i'll figure out the details later uh, so finally we have list x's and here's the one that we're kind of interested in So basically when we're working with this, now this is going to involve recursion, I assume. So let's take a look. So first things first, the value that we're assigning is going to have to be a um, list as well. So, Again, naming here is just um, atrocious. Please forgive me today <laughs> in particular. Um, match V can be um, and if it's um, a list of X's, then that's all right. But if it's um, anything else then no bueno in fact what happens if uh, if I do that in Python so if I do Python a B and I do this probably work actually won't it yeah that's okay um off I yeah do something like that to my values to unpack oh so if I actually did that that would be okay okay what about that int object is not iterable so you can um, give any iterable uh, value there uh, for us we'll just um Oops, need to get rid of those. Can assign to an integer literal count. Uh, can't decom uh, decompose, deconstruct. Um, yeah, decompose, I think. Let's see, what does Rust call it? <laughs> uh, interesting. Uh, maybe if I if I use Google for this one, must decompose. The structure. Okay. Yeah, that probably be better uh, terminology. Can't destructure list uh, non list into list. That and all right, so next thing now, this is probably where I'll have to start introducing um, recursion. So let's see. So eval, so this would probably be a function assign list where there is an LHS and an RHS I'm guessing would probably just um and then 
yeah, there'll definitely be an env here. I'll just um, mock out what this kind of a thing would look like. So if we have, let's see. Uh, so we'll be going for each item in LHS. If it's a var, then assign. We also need to check the lengths at, uh, at the start. Assert lengths are equal. Uh, so assign um, corresponding RHS item. Uh, if it's again any of these, uh, so we go else error. And we'll do the same thing. Yeah, at this point, it's the same thing, actually. So it'll be if, uh, whoops, if list, then do, um, do an assign list. And that, uh, that will be that and that will um, help us as well because when we introduce um, object uh, assignment to object literals and destructuring in that way that can um, go ahead and live up here as well and they can be um, uh, mutually uh, recursive um, Let's see, so I'm probably, probably going to have to, um, to put this in, um, in a separate assign function, will I? Yeah, where does the recursion start here? Because what I could do is instead of putting this stuff into a sign list, it would probably make more sense to do for each item in list assign LHS. So if I go for each I in LHS, we go assign in LHS I RHS I. Does that make sense? And then this goes into the assign the actual assignment um, section or the assignment function. I think that makes sense. Yeah, so at the end, each of these um, the list on the left hand side is going to have to end up in, yeah, so we're essentially only allowing nesting of uh, variable names and lists. So it's going to have, to, it's effectively going to be a tree of, of variable names. And they're going to be able to overwrite each other. I'm not going to really, again, a lot of things I'm not, not worried about are not going to worry myself too much about for the moment. Um, and there's effectively, well, it won't be, will it be shadowing? Kind of, not technically though, but it'll be, you know, overwriting variables 
uh, almost immediately. So I, as in, you know, I'm going to allow stuff like that. And it means that, you know, B is going to have the value two in this situation. So it's going to be evaluated to, uh, or assigned to have one assigned to it first and then almost immediately have two assigned to it before anything else gets executed. So it's going to be um, a little strange in that regard. Um, I could keep track of the assignments um, of what assignments have occurred and make sure that all the variables being assigned in um, in an assignment are unique. But I won't. I won't do that for now, but I'll leave a comment for myself uh, to be aware of that um, that possibility and the fact that I haven't added in um, handling for that. Um, so let's see, yeah. So we probably have enough there to, to get started with our um, assignment function. Uh, so this is going to be a kind of a helper. So it's not going to have our usual uh, result um, uh, result layout. So LHS is going to be a value and the right hand side is going to be a value. Um, and then down here, the values are going to be lists. So to get started, let's grab this. And we'll assume that our um, our setup is going to our actually we are going to have the the same kind of um, result thing here. Oh, bad syntax there. I mean, it's only my own custom style, but should be consistent and um, so I'm going to put that there and we're going to go assign do I want to evaluate the left hand side does that make sense Mm, interesting. So if I had um, a bit of code such as, let's see, if a is equal to one, what would happen here? So this would be the expression. And so this would be a, if I say that's going to be a prop consisting of an expression and a name, then I would evaluate the expression. And then if I had something like this, Get into some funky territory here. Hmm. What would we be doing in this scenario? What would Python do in this scenario? Again, always nice to have um a reference language. So if I have and uh, is equal to just creates um, a dictionary. Oh yeah. And so if I go uh, and maybe if I give it a oops.
And if I do that, I say that's equal to two. It's not actually going to do any. In fact, maybe to actually see the results of my side effects, I will do this. And f is just going to return um, my value. So, and then if I go a is equal to one, and whoops, maybe I'll actually change the value. So that's two. And then if I do this, I really don't know what would happen here, actually. Three and three, or three and four. And then if I go X, ah, interesting. So it does, um, it does evaluate, which is what you'd expect. So going, coming back here, yeah, definitely gonna have to evaluate the, uh, recursively evaluate the, the left-hand side. Yep. So this will be kind of eval a sign. Again, this is going to be kind of a helper function because it's not going to correspond directly with a, with an AST node. Well, it's going to correspond with an AST um, item. Hmm. Valus sign. So if it's a name, if it's a variable anyway. So let's take things back to basics. If it's a variable at any point, it'll assign the thing on the right hand side. That makes sense to me. Will I have evaluated? Do I evaluate the left hand side first? That does make sense. Or do I evaluate it within the uh, the recursive assignment statement? Hmm. <laughs> also forgot my water. I don't mind some water right now.
no, I can't evaluate the whole thing at the start because then this, all the variables will actually be expanded. So right off, this is going to have to actually be an expression. And if the expression, oh, and that's what I've been matching on anyway. And if the expression is a variable, then it will not get evaluated. If it's a call, however, it will get evaluated. So uh, you are forgiven call, we'll put you back here. And this will be something like, let's see. So it'll be eval expression LHS. Although no, because if I go back to my Python example, I did that, can't assign to a function call. Oh, I even used almost the exact same language because what's actually happening is it's not assigning to the function call, it's um, assigning to the indexing made on the function call. So yeah, that's all right for now. And um, then, so depending on the expression, So let wise can't structure non list into list down here we go assign list. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that should be all right. Sign list and so we have x's and y's and this is going to be a vector of expression and a vector of value yes I think, well, RHS hasn't been, oh yeah, so that would be a value list. And then, to do the assertion there. Assert the links are equal. So if um, then LHS is not equal to then RHS turn error can't assign um, items. 
to uh, assign this many items to that many items. And then for um, V in LHS mm, enumerable. Oh, can I zip through? Um, can I take um, ownership of two uh, two rustlets at the same time, like doing a, a zip or something? Zip own. Yeah, maybe if I just look up zip first. Oops, I just did the same thing. Mm. How can this be used? Zip. And maybe vector zip. This looks a little old, 2015. Things have probably moved on a bit since then. Iter and then zip. Can I just do and so where are we error wise? We have a lot of errors. Uh, but none down this far in the code. So maybe if I just do LHS zip. RHS, it'll tell me what's wrong with it and what the types are, perhaps. Uh, so this is on line one four. Oh, maybe there's maybe there's not anything wrong with it. Uh, maybe if I go let back uh, x back int. Whoops, i eight. It'll tell me what's wrong with the types. Uh, Oh, yeah, method can't be called on that due to trace bound, so it will have to be on iterator and same there. So maybe things haven't changed so much. Uh, expected a uh, vector due to that. So on its own, uh, so found a struct, which is an iterator of those things and when they're like that you can get the owned values it looks like for in those Sign n does that make sense again very poor naming uh, but maybe that'll work so 150 assign yeah so down here we'll have to turn okay gives an error and we will return the error. Yeah, 
I'm not adding to the messages at the moment, so I'll just uh, return the error as is. And uh, so line 150 expected value found in enum. So we're reducing the number of errors anyway, steadily. Uh, one, two, three, line one, two, three. And insert. If you don't care about Google missing fields, oh, can I just do that for all of them? One fifty not found in this scope. Length isn't found. Probably something like that, is it? Oh, getting through them. Um, assign list. Uh, line 136. Expected um, expression. A vector of expressions, but found a vector of list items. So what we probably want to do there is, do we need to evaluate the list items? Got list items anyway. It's because we're allowing um, yeah, that could be a uh, so first of all, this could be could have a spread. So there's a list of uh, list items. In fact, if I take that, perhaps. And then evaluate the, well, not evaluate it, but uh, take the expression out of it. So this would be uh, list item expression and is spread. If is spread, then We'll say um, in fact does Python have um spreading like that? Uh, so that's Python two. Let's check Python three just to just to see. So um, if we go x one 
two, three, if I go y is equal to x dot dot four, five. Yeah, Python doesn't have that at the moment, so I can't check. But, so if it's a spread, then at the moment, just say something like, spread operator in list assignment. <laughs> Assign nemendrit. Um, and then we'll use expression uh, 44 uh, for assign So what are the three arguments? First takes the env, takes the right hand side last, and then it'll take um I'll just or I'll take the evaluated right hand side and I'll just pass in. I won't probably won't be able to do that, but uh because of the life cycle, but let's just see if um one nine one three six. Uh, that was going to be for the spread, but I put that elsewhere. And line forty four. Yeah, and the that's going to blow up the um the borrower, but the um the types so far seem to line up so uh yeah, let's take a stab. How much time have we left? 20 minutes. Let's take a stab at actually uh, implementing this. So in the in the parser and AST then. So we have an assignment. Now we're going to change this to take an expression instead. Now let's see if the, um, this is gonna be very risky. This could very easily, um, end up as a conflict. Ooh. So let's see. No conflict. Golden. Nice one. That's very good. I'm happy with that. Hopefully it doesn't throw one up now. Um assign Getting the names wrong here. Um, pattern doesn't mention field LHS. Uh, that's in, oh, those are errors in a val. Uh, 37. I'll probably have to borrow that there. Now, what is the issue that we're seeing here? Can't move that out of RHS. So that's on line 124. What's going on here? Uh, because it's behind a shared reference. Okay, and something similar happening with the um, The, uh, with the values down here. So moves are being, uh, moves are occurring. Can I take mutable references to these? Will that, um, will that allow me to uh, get around that? Types different mutability. Line forty four. One five eight. 
Nope, I'm getting more errors that way. And let's see. One, two, four. Oh, but even though it's mutable, I'm getting um because I'm giving it away. Um Oh, and I would have to actually, yeah, in that case, I'd actually have to get rid of that entirely and just, so it's not a reference anymore, it's just handing the whole thing over. How about that? And just give the whole thing over like that. Line 158. Yep, that worked. And then 153. Again, issues with moving. And this time because we're moving the left hand side, so we probably want to get rid of that expression stuff or the reference stuff. So the assignment is just going to cons write up consume these um, values. Line forty four found that would have expected that. Yeah, so maybe I'll have to clone that, maybe. We'll try that for the moment. And what was I? discussing earlier about um, what wasn't being evaluated yet in the assignment. So I'm just making a note for myself for later. So I think it's important in these kind of cases to um, to notify about redundant operations because they can often, like such as the case where you, in this scenario where you assign to X twice and one of these is effectively redundant because catching these and alerting the user can often 
kind of help identify mistakes basically um i think a fantastic example of this is uh done by go uh wherein if you have a block and it recognizes like this would usually be caught at a linter but by a linter but go will often um notify you if a local variable um is you know assigned i believe but never actually used um especially within a narrow uh, a narrow scope and that can often indicate that you assigned or that you created a new variable within within for example an if statement um but never used it it can often indicate that the scenario where you had meant to assign a value to a variable outside of that scope um, but you accidentally used um, Go's um, initialization um, operator. So um, I think I think these kind of uh, these kind of reports where you just indicate some redundancy, like the fact that some redundancy uh, is being performed, um, can be very helpful in in kind of mitigating errors before they happen. Um, so um so it might be something that uh, that I'd like to uh handle in future. So line one sixty if is spread. Expected boo but found a boo. So and one six four Got a reference there. Can I zip? Funny that it's not giving out about the reference there. Can I do that? And the data is moved there. That is moved here because move uh, has that type. And is moving those not allowed? Can I do a zip owned? Rust zip owner. Because uh, it's uh, oh, can I do it or owned? Is that um, I believe that's a thing with Rust, is not it or owned? Whoops. Maybe it's your vowel. Uh, into iter. There we go. Um, so I don't think I need the references anymore. And result must be used, so line 45. Um, whoops, what's going wrong there? Does the sign not have the same, um, same return value? Oh, it's just that. Yes, yes. Uh, so I need to do an if let. Uh, uh, nice. Thanks, Ross. Um, reminding me that I need to, to handle my errors. Uh, return E. Or error E. Uh, 
add line 45 less oops less if okay so we have something so it's compiling again now whether it's actually going to be correct has yet to be seen but um i'm actually oh i don't want to say confident because i'll probably jinx it but um there's potential there we'll see we'll see what we come up with uh, so b and c is going to be equal to x's and then we'll print b and we'll print c oh what's going to happen here wow wow so that's um that's working that um that correctly uh destructured our uh, our variables so let's see um so a b c d e and f well we'll try that first and we should get an error um Um, can't assign six items to <laughs> cannot assign six items to five item uh, so let's see let's um and we'll just take a cheeky uh, work around to pluralization there to assign six items to five items um, so let's correct that and so b c a b c that's okay and then if we say do something like this and assign to d twice first we'll get an error saying that e hasn't been defined and then we'll get an uh, d will contain the value b no C. Yes, nice one. So that's all. Um, all working fairly. Um, fairly according to plan. Um, for some. Uh, for some interesting. Uh, so a simple. Um. A kind of amendment to this, we can. Uh, let's see if we go to the assignment we can uh, check whether the name is an underscore does it make sense to um, handle this at the excuse me uh, does it make sense to handle this at the syntax level or the um, uh, the evaluation level um, for now it's probably simple enough to just do it at the uh, at the evaluation level so uh so let's see if um if name is not equal to underscore well close uh, <laughs> close the uh where is i okay there we go name is not equal to that alrighty then and then so if I assigned that yeah an underscore will never get defined so that just gets ignored nice one so we have um, B C C blind carbon copy yeah nice one so uh broken apart nice to meet you Are, am i hacking uh <laughs> um uh technically i suppose um if you go by uh, uh is it who is that um guy you swallow back in the day eric simon raymond author of cathedral and the bazaar 
he would probably go off on a big rant saying, yes, what I'm doing is hacking. Um, depends on what you mean by hacking, though. Um, but yeah, I, I would I would call this hacking. I'm hacking away on some code. Uh, thanks for the question. <laughs> um, can I hack your grandmother's Facebook? Um, no, like, I'm just going to say straight up. Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't, um, and it, it probably wouldn't be within my uh, within my abilities. No, um, I wouldn't have the time or energy to uh, to try and hack uh, somebody's Facebook, um, and I also wouldn't recommend it. Uh, please, please don't, uh, please don't hack people uh, people's accounts. Um, thanks for the question, though. Um, so let's see, um, next thing here is, let's see, uh, the last bit I was going to take a look at was, yes, this, uh, spread over, um, uh, for, uh, for the rest of a list. So let's see, um. First of all, we can probably, and again, I'm not sure if I'm implementing this in, in just the right way. So um, so the spread operator that I had implemented earlier was, a, I, I suppose, not necessarily a hack, but, um, but yeah, I do wonder if it was being kind of implemented in the right way and at the right level. Um, because if I want to um to implement this new version of the same thing, I would have to put it probably here and call it reverse maybe reverse spread for the moment. Um, um Actually, just um, not sure if you're still there, uh, broken apart. But um, as it uh, hacking is in in some ways part of the way I did get into computer programming and things like that. Uh, it was something interesting to me back in the day in kind of school, where I was like um, just curious about the concept of hacking and how you could hack and you know, have your computer that was connected to the internet and somehow, you know, manage to kind of get, become in possession or in communication even with another person's kind of device. And part of the interesting part was, you know, that it wouldn't be, you know, within their control that you'd somehow be able to you know, work around uh, their systems defenses and just, I didn't even know what, I couldn't even conceptualize uh, what that would, uh, what that would even look like. Uh, so naturally I went to a teacher and said, uh, you know, our computers uh, teacher at the time and said, you know, can you hack people's computers and uh, write viruses? Um, naturally, you know, the, <laughs> naturally that's who you'd go to with that kind of a question. And he said, you know, I could if I wanted to. And I was like, how can I do that? And um, he said, yeah, just, uh, you know, go away and uh, learn C++. So I, I took, um, we had a, a week off around that time that I, uh, that I just went away and learned uh, C++, printed, went to C++.com printed off uh, there were probably like you know 11 or 12 chapters on the website that I printed them all off put them into a little folder and read them over that uh, that week and um, I learned uh, C++ during my midterm break that year and um, yeah just got into programming that way um, never actually you know I suppose you know properly uh, hacked someone's computer didn't really want to get into the legal issues of it all anyway. 
but um or road viruses or anything um learned the concepts of all of those things or learned how to hack computers and learned how to write viruses um and what all those terms mean and what they entail like um, a huge amount of my um pre-college introduction to to computers and things like that was through uh probably half through uh writing computer games and the other half uh through uh learning computer security and ethical hacking and things like that um but it all you know um it all came from um yeah asking a computer teacher how to uh how to hack and write viruses so um yeah interesting uh interesting start but um i'm sure there have been stranger um so Continuing on, uh, we have, so it's just gone seven o'clock, so I won't spend too much uh, longer at this. Um, so I've just introduced this idea of a reverse spread or what I call it, a reverse spread or maybe capture, um, maybe unspread. So spread is distributing things out amongst elements of a list then an unspread would be gathering that back up so um terminology wise or linguistically that makes sense to me um so let's try that and um we can actually at a syntactic level say that this can only occur on the last element of the list so that's kind of neat um on spread is false and so then let's see where so and the really nice thing about rust is that as soon as um as soon as we uh, introduce this into um into our uh, AST here, it's going to immediately tell us um, where it is not being used. So we can add handling for that, uh, which I think is very groovy. Um, is unspread. Now, one thing, and normally what I would do here as well, oh, this, <laughs> this could actually be kind of tricky to implement. Uh, and in fact, it invalidates um, the, the rule I created earlier that you can't assign to um, uh, kind of, uh, lists of mit mismatched links. This invalidates that. Um, and it also means we can't uh, use this nice um, iterating uh, syntax for, uh, for going through the, the assignment. Mm, that's, a, that's a little unfortunate. Mm, what could we do here instead? Uh, for the moment, I think I'm going to leave it there, though. Um, problem is on spread. Like, I assume... Does this turn it into an iterator? Oh, this, like, I'm thinking of something here that would be very cool if it actually worked. Um, but ooh, I don't think it would work. I'll just call it, uh, what I call it iterator. Is that a good name in, in Rust? I really doubt it. Um, so if is 
on spread. If is on spread break and then oh no there's just there's just too much wrong with that. I was going to um try and reuse the iterator after uh after a break, but that just um no that uh that wouldn't be good. Um so what I'll do for the moment, uh, don't want to leave it in a broken state. I suppose I'll, I'll remove uh, support for the unspread at the moment. I'll try and remember the name because I'm kind of proud of that name, actually. Uh, truth be told. But what we'll do is we'll remove unspread and leave it there for next week. Let's see. Yeah, so we have um, we have list destructuring working now. So, and like I said, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it's a good place to to leave things on a high note. So let's see, uh, get status. What's there to be added? Yeah, updated assignments to take expressions on the left. Fix the syntax there updated the assignment, uh, implemented the new assignment, updated the parser, and updated the examples. So, um, whoops, no, not, oof, not an amend, abort, abort. Um, and this time, enter the commit message. So what do we want to do? Added, uh, no, use imperative language, um, part of the uh, seven rules of good commit messages, um, add support. Well, I probably should have broken it up so that um, I add support for um, underscore assignments uh, separately, but we'll, uh, we'll make do. Uh, so add support for um, list destructuring. And there we go. Um, do I have a repository for this yet? No, I don't. Um, so just have it locally. Um, I'll add some remote repository for this at some point. Um, cool. Uh, well, thanks to anyone who's uh, watching this. And um, yeah, see you next week at uh, on Saturday at uh, 3 o'clock. Uh, thanks and goodbye.